Hey guys, I'm Aisha and I'm going to show you how you can find amazing wildlife in your garden and in your area. So I'll be starting off in various gardens and then I'll go around the UK as well. So literally wherever you live, there's no excuse, you're going to find something. And um, I'm going to be using common names and Latin names to identify species because scientists all around the world and just normal people use Latin names so that wherever you are in the world, you know exactly what species they're talking about because in some countries they use different names for different species and um, they sound really cool so I like saying it but everyone like pronounces it slightly different so I'll put the names of the like the common name and the Latin name in the box below so you know exactly what animals I'm talking about and then I'll be using videos and photos to help you as well so if I haven't stated it all of the videos, I mean all of the videos and all of the photos I've taken myself because I like doing that so I thought and it's a good way to see the animals I'm talking about and then to see them in their habitats as well. So let's do this. So a regular animal I see in my garden in London is the grey squirrel. Its Latin name is Sierras carolinius and they were originally from North America but they were introduced into the UK in 1876 where they thrived most British forests and pushed the red squirrel very close to extinction. The main reasons for this was because they are much faster breeders than red squirrels and they are carriers of the pox virus which does nothing to them but causes serious infection to the red squirrels. Nice! Hey guys, so it's actually raining at the moment but I didn't want to keep this guy for too long because he needs to get out and get some food. So this is a common black ground beetle. Its Latin name is Petrostichus melanaris. I found him when I was walking home but I've also seen him like around in like this species around in the garden. They eat worms, maggots, centipedes and other like, soft bodied insects. They live in multiple environments because their prey live in multiple environments. And it's, the larva is also predatory, it eats worms and stuff like underground. Um, like other beetles, they go through metamorphosis, so they go through, so it's, they go from an egg to a larva to a pupa and then a full grown adult. And the full grown adult for this species lives up to two to three years. It's pretty cool. So the second garden was situated in the south of the UK. The main sort of birds that I saw there were a lot of garden birds, so robins, house sparrows, blue tits, and also blackbirds and seagulls. I don't know if you guys realise, a black coloured bird that was drinking the water was not a blackbird, it's actually a starling. Its Latin name is Sternus vulgaris. Oh, it sounds like I'm speaking Dothraki, very nice. And um, the main difference between the two is that the starling has like a shiny black coat f covered in spots and the blackbird is just like a matte black colour. And its Latin name is Turdus marula. Took me three times to say that about laughing, guys. The other bird seen drinking the water is a female house sparrow. Its Latin name is Passa domesticus and the females are just a brownie colour and the males are also brown but they have like a black face that goes from the top of their breast to their beak and to the top of their eyes and that is distinctive for male house sparrows. You pretty much can find these guys anywhere and they eat a range of foods, mainly various seeds but also just scraps of food that they, they, you find lying about that's why they are quite successful in the urban environment as well as the rural. So I captured a really nice image of a robin in the south garden with his mouth open singing away very nice and I also caught one in in the London garden as well which is really nice and what I really like about it is that there is um, a trampoline in the background which you normally people wouldn't normally like when you see a when you see a bird you're like oh yeah very nice in the in the trees behind it and all that but no there's there's something human made in that and I like that because it shows you that gorgeous wildlife gorgeous birds can be seen in a human nature environment and that's that's pretty awesome Another way of finding amazing wildlife is through ponds so ponds create a huge biodiversity they allow mammals like bats and hedgehogs to get water. You'd see things like marine invertebrates, frogs, newts, tadpoles, large, large range of, of different animals. 
So I got a really nice video of some tadpoles from a friend's garden, which is very nice. And I don't know if you can tell the difference between frog spawn and, and toad spawn. The main differences are toads are jet black and have more like a circular head and then a straight tail compared to frogs, which are also black but more speckledy and have more of a curved head. They like curve into one another. With frogs, they, and toads actually, they come out of hibernating and they go straight to the ponds to breed and then they will lay their eggs in springtime and then the frog the tadpoles will come out and and leave between like leave the pond between june and september it depends on when they've been they've been laying but due to increasing temperatures some frogs are getting muddled up thinking oh it's it's november december but it's a warm climate but they don't know that they're just thinking oh it's a warm climate oh i'm going to come out hibernating and 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 get busy so they lay the eggs in november between November and December, thinking that it's spring season and their the tadpole are going to survive. But actually, it's the opposite. It goes into winter and they all die. So it's another happy reason for climate change. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was my first like, proper video, so it's not going to be amazing, but it's something, isn't it? Next one I'm going to do is in London, showing you all the animals and wildlife you'll see in London. And I'll be like, going to places like Richmond Park as well, but not just Richmond Park, like proper urban areas to show you even there you can find something just pretty cool and um, just one more thing say you're in a car waiting or you're in a queue or you or you're you're in a car you you have some sort of window to the world just just look get off your phone get off your phone the amount of time the amount of time you have to look at your phone and look at Charlie and Mindy's bloody photos of Spain. You can do that later. When can you look outside? The best wildlife you see will not be what I capture on this film. It will be what you see with your own eyes. I can't express that enough. You're just walking somewhere and you just see some sort of amazing wildlife and you just go, oh, that was pretty awesome. I'm glad I saw that. I see it every day. Every day of my life, I see some sort of amazing wildlife. I'm just happy to see. So just open your eyes. Just embrace the wildlife. It's just... This is brilliant. But yeah, see you later.